Well, the main difference between free software and other software is that other software is designed to put the developer in power, and you, the user, are kind of subjected to the power of the developer. Uh, what free software does, it kind of flips it on its head and says, well, you as a user deserve the freedom to use your computer to do the things that you want to do. I'm Matt Lee. I'm the now the technology lead at Creative Commons. My background is really in sort of free software. Uh, I used to work for the Free Software Foundation for a long time. And I'm originally from the UK, but I now live in Boston in the United States. When we talk about free software, we're talking about software that's free like free speech and less so in terms of free like a free beer or a free lunch with someone. Uh, and we really kind of define free software as having four characteristics. The first characteristic, freedom zero, is the freedom to run the program for any purpose. Freedom one is the freedom to uh, modify the program. Freedom two is the freedom to uh, share the program. And freedom three is the freedom to share modified versions of the program. And if you have those four freedoms, you have free software. If you have one of those freedoms missing or two of those freedoms missing, you are uh, not using free software. Uh, a good example of that would be something like, if you look at something like iTunes, people think, well, iTunes is free. I can download it from Apple's website. And it's like, well, that's, that's true. You can get it from Apple's website, but it's not free software because, first of all, you can't run iTunes for any purpose. That document that you never read when you click I agree says quite explicitly you can't use it for a lot of reasons. Apple takes things like they'll make changes to iTunes when they find problems with their encryption scheme and their DRM software and they will just enforce those restrictions on users of iTunes. So the next time you open iTunes, it will actually refuse to do anything until you upgrade. And so they are, they are heavily restricting what you can and can't do with, with their software. And if it's free software, anyone could improve iTunes and give it to anybody else they wanted to, and they could use it to help other people. But as it stands right now, only Apple can, can kind of make changes to iTunes. And therefore, we leave all of the users of iTunes without help, without the ability to use software within freedom. Many people have used pieces of software over the years that no longer exist anymore. And I think that if you invest time in using a piece of free software, uh, you will ultimately be able to use that piece of software for a very, very long time to come. You can't be sure that Adobe will keep Photoshop going forever. It's probably not going to happen anytime soon, but I could see a future where Adobe just stops selling Photoshop or they stop selling Illustrator. They've already done it with certain pieces of software. They bought uh, Fireworks from Macromedia and they don't make fireworks anymore. So everyone who used fireworks for 20 years no longer could use fireworks um, because Adobe decided to stop making that. Now, if that was free software, even though Adobe, who are maybe the corporate sponsor of this piece of free software, were no longer supporting it, the community could still keep fire, you know, fireworks going. And so it would be you know, still being used. Under a free software model, you could go and get your, your copy of Photoshop from any number of vendors. Um, who are all equally kind of engaged in its support and its maintenance. And then really you would choose the company that had the best offering. So maybe uh, here in Nottingham, there'd be a local company that would support GIMP and Inkscape, uh, which is similar to free Photoshop and Illustrator. And maybe uh, they would offer a better offering that would be more appropriate for a local person. So there'd be workshop access and on you know, on-site training that maybe you would go with a local company versus the current choice, which is you get it from Adobe or you don't get it at all. That's the real kind of tragedy uh, of proprietary software is that it ultimately leaves users dependent and then divided and ultimately without a choice. And so if you can spend any time using free software, even if you use Photoshop, you could spend, maybe you could install GIMP. And the next time you um, have a thing you want to create, try using GIMP. And if you get stuck, you could always save it in a Photoshop file and go away in Photoshop and kind of, and kind of do what you need to do and maybe come back to the GIMP. You know, the, the, it's worth investing the time and effort into using something that uh, ultimately is, has your back versus the back of investors and you know, big corporate uh, clients. So, okay, here's the uh, elephant in the room. I mean, are these reliable or are these just for people who like to get under the hood of their computer? I think that, that's the one thing that comes yeah. to um, I would say that generally speaking, the free software programs that you've heard of are reliable. Um, there are, of course, new versions of those software and programs, and you can't always rely that the very latest version of something is going to be reliable, but that's true too of any software. Um, I would say that if you go and you download a piece of software from, if you go down and download Ubuntu, for example, or, or uh, Fedora or Debian or one of these distributions of, of free software, 
and you install the current, like latest release, uh, you're going to have a pretty good time. Things are, generally speaking, going to work well for you. Now, you're going to have the occasional thing where something doesn't quite work. You might have a webcam that doesn't quite work well, or maybe your uh, your wireless card has uh, needs extra proprietary software to function. Um, and those are real problems. They're problems that all computer users face. But when you use Windows or you use a Mac, those problems are kind of hidden away from you. You don't really see them because they don't mind adding kind of extra proprietary programs of what you already have to make those things function. So um, what I would say is this, is um, if you have uh, a computer that you would like to try free software, a lot of these distributions make what's called a live CD or a live USB. You can download it onto a, onto a blank CD or onto a blank USB stick and just try it without actually installing it on your computer. It'll be a little bit slower, of course, because it's running off a CD or a USB stick, but uh, it'll give you some sense of like what works and what doesn't work. But uh, yeah, it'll give you a sense of the reliability too. And if you have uh, an older computer that you don't use anymore, then by all means, you can definitely go ahead and uh, install free software on there. It will work surprisingly well compared to maybe the way that your Windows or your Mac used to function when it was kind of on its last legs. And uh, I think you'll have a good time with it. So video editing isn't always the easiest thing to do with free software, but it can be done, right? People do edit video with free software all the time. And you know, video editing software is somewhat in its infancy uh, as free software.